There he is. Alex, what are you doing running? What are you doing running? Just doing this thing, huh? That's my crew chief, Jeremy, yelling at me because our strategy for this race was to hike the entire thing. I can see where he's coming from, but I don't have a lot of sympathy for him because if we're really being honest, this whole thing is entirely his fault. Almost exactly two years ago, Jeremy looped me in on his harebrained scheme to attempt a rim to rim to rim run in the Grand Canyon. It just so happens that I've often found myself inexplicably drawn to horrible ideas, so I was instantly a yes for that excursion. At that time, 50 miles with 11,000 feet of vert in one day was way more than I had ever attempted. After spending 18 hours going down, across, up, back down, back across, and back up the Grand Canyon, I fully expected to feel completely exhausted and crippled, but I didn't. And it left me wondering, I wonder how many days in a row I could do something like that. And now here we are. Hey guys, before we get into the race itself, I just wanna draw your attention to one of the main reasons that I'm competing in this event to start with. I'm raising money for the Barth Syndrome Foundation. Barth Syndrome is something I really wasn't aware of until I moved into my current house a few years ago and I met one of our neighbors, his name's Wyatt. He was born with Barth Syndrome. It's a very rare genetic disorder. Only about 140 people in the US have it. So it's extremely rare, not a lot of people know about it. I didn't even know it existed until I met Wyatt. Mainly affects your musculoskeletal system as well as uh, the immune system, so he's very prone to injury as well as infection. Uh, it's, a, it's a serious condition. He's dealt with his entire life. He's a sophomore in high school right now, and he's just a great kid. A couple years ago, I heard him saying that he wanted to raise money for the Barth Syndrome Foundation to help other kids with Barth, so I thought that was pretty great. I'm now using the Coca Dona 250 uh, as a vehicle to help raise funds for them as well. If you're interested in donating, uh, I'll put a link down in the description below to the donation page. I've worked closely with uh, Emily Madalinski at the Barth Syndrome Foundation for, for months now. Getting that page set up, getting a lot of our communications set up, uh, sending out emails to different folks, both in the Barth Syndrome Foundation distribution, as well as some other local running clubs, spreading the word around our neighborhood. Also, I've got a lot of support from my coworkers as well. Uh, so thank you to everyone from the bottom of my heart who's already donated. And if you'd still like to donate, we're gonna leave that donation page open until the end of May. Uh, so there's still some time to do that. On behalf of myself, Wyatt, his family, and everyone at the Barth Syndrome Foundation, uh, thank you so much. Uh, and we'll get back to the event. Thank you. The Coca Dona 250 is a trail race that starts in Black Canyon City, Arizona, about 30 minutes north of downtown Phoenix and then winds its way north across the Bradshaw mountain range, making for a brutal first day with over 10,000 feet of loose, rocky, and hot climbing. Through Whiskey Row and Prescott, across open grasslands and desert, up and over Mingus Mountain, through the historic mining town of Jerome and neighboring Clarkdale, across the Verde River, through the desert, and over Deer Pass on the way to the red rock walls of Sedona, across Oak Creek and up onto the Coconino Plateau, and then down a long series of forest service roads and trails through sprawling pine forests until you reach the old Air Force base of Fort Tuthill. 
As you approach the city of Flagstaff, the course veers off to the east, making a loop around the rim of Walnut Canyon, and then will be faced with one final 2,000-foot climb over Mount Eldon at mile 238. From the top of Eldon, we'll be able to see the rest of the course laid out in front of us as it descends back down into Buffalo Park, through the streets of Flagstaff, and to the final objective, the finish line down Cocodona Alley at Heritage Square. In total, it will be a trek of 249.4 miles with over 40,000 feet of climbing. Elevation ranges from just under 2,000 feet above sea level to over 9,200 at the top of Mount Eldon. All of this must be completed in under 125 hours while also staying ahead of cutoff times at 18 of the eight stations along the way. This isn't just my first 200 miler, it's my first 100 miler. I've barely slept the night before the race because I was so nervous. But it's 5 a.m. on Monday morning, and it's time to see if the last 17 months of training have paid off. You're going to be changed when you reach the finish line. But it's not the finish line that's going to change you. It's this journey. It's every friendship, experience with other runners and pacers and crews and volunteers, through multiple sunsets and rises, high highs and low lows, coffee, beer, amazing scenery, two river crossings, and lots of blisters. It's the journey that's gonna change you. Take the time and enjoy it. My best wishes to each of you. See you at Heritage Square. Happy running, y'all. And we gotta do a lot more climbing. <laughs> in quite a bit of climbing. Man, these views are outrageous. to the top of Lane Mountain, it is brutal. That climb is tough. It's like almost 30 miles of up and down, mostly up, followed by a big like eight mile climb up to Lane here. Well, they did say the first day is supposed to be the hardest day, so <clears throat> let's hope that's true. Uh, I was told there would eventually be some climbing. Yeah, we're doing okay. <laughs> you know. Thanks. Come and Just got out of Lane Mountain Aid Station on my way over to Crown King where 
the stitch area where we're stuck. Yeah, these views. Look at me. Look at this. Well, just this short section of downhill road between Lane Mountain and Crown King. I can feel my spirits coming back a little bit after that first part. Oh, man, that was so hard. Get some food, get some fluids, and get a little bit of downhill, and it's coming back. That's good. We'll see how long that goes, but <laughs> feel pretty good right now. Good enough to keep going. That's all you need. time you're actually running I didn't actually think to get you in any video but you know that's the way it goes Thank you. all I was really doing is uh, sitting and eating on this thing just reading all the uh, texts I got nice there he is heading out for the night one thanks for the help man all right brother we'll see you yes yes at some point. I'll call you if I get some stuff in right but yep. I probably will I can see you at uh, I can see you at whiskey row so yeah. I will be there. All right, man. All right, brother. Coming down from Crown King in the dark, feeling a little nauseous. So I slowed down my pace a little bit, trying to get some more water and food in my stomach. Usually that's when I get nauseous, when I haven't taken in enough. So <sighs> trying to address that and uh, keep moving. Good morning. <laughs> oh, is this way? <laughs> well, we're into day two. I haven't slept yet. I'm going to be sleeping at. Uh, the next aid station, which is Camp Fomatochik, I think. Uh, I'm gonna try to lay down for a couple hours. Yeah, I spent a lot of time with uh, my hiking buddy, uh, Corel. He was super helpful. I was in a really low spot last night coming into Arastra Creek. And uh, I was sitting there feeling pretty sorry about myself. And uh, I saw him get up and leave, and I thought to myself, hey, if I don't get up right now, <laughs> I might I might not leave this aid station. So you need to get get off your butt and start moving. So uh, and from there on out we were we were together for uh, three or four aid stations. I really needed that. He helped pull me out of a real low point. I'm actually feeling better today. Try to get a few, couple hours of sleep and uh, then right after on Matochik, I'll be heading down to Whiskey Row where I can see uh, Jeremy from the, for the first time today. I've only seen him one other time at Crown King so far, and Jeremy's gonna pace me from Whiskey Row to Fane Ranch, so that'll be nice to spend some time on the trail with him. Oh, got about a uh, an hour sleep in Camp Lamatochik, and now I'm heading towards Whiskey Row. Uh, the GPS file does not match the trails here. We're following the flags, but my watch keeps telling me we're way off course. So, not sure what's going on there, but we're just following the flags, and it seems like it's taking us the right way. So, hopefully, it is. <laughs> Hiking with my new friend Jada and covering some pretty good ground. We're doing 1730 miles. Oh, this is a nice change of pace from all the rocky trails from yesterday. It's just nice smooth single track right now. Hey, nice job. hey guys. Thanks for coming out. Hey, thanks for doing this. High five, buddy. Hey, if yeah. you want to eat, man, grab some from the tables. Oh, thanks. Thanks, guys. Oh, yeah. Good? 
Considering, yeah. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> Over 70 miles in. Yeah. Thank you so much, guys. Hey, good luck. Thanks. That was pretty cool. There's our hero. Way to go. Bring on the up. phone. <laughs> As usual. Come on, man. How you doing? Know? Hey. Oh, yeah. Pick me up. On your sleeves? Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's wearing these shirts, these guys. Oh, Thank you. Shoes. Eddie Bauer. Look it up. Thank Bye. you. Great that there. Yeah. Thank you. This is beautiful through here. That's killing it. <laughs> my balance, my balance is You made it across that one. Yeah, really. <laughs> you see that bridge bend? <laughs> by headlamp. <laughs> Dude, I keep kicking cow turds. I can feel them like roll when I hit them. Do I have to duck them through here? <laughs> Anything good in there? No. I was 
falling asleep standing up. I was literally walking with my eyes closed down this forest road last night. And somehow, and it actually worked. Somehow. <laughs> I don't know how I didn't fall. Oh. I feel better than I sound. The legs are still there. Feet are a little beat up. Um, but yeah, when I, when I woke up this morning after sleeping for two hours, I think that's what, like, actually coming back from the dead feels like. I rolled up out of bed like, <laughs> oh, I think it's like 17 miles down to Jerome. That's where I'm headed. I already spoke with Jeremy this morning. He's going to meet me there. And keep moving. A little bit at a time. I'm not sure if you can see it, but there's a smoke plume over there on the plateau across from us. So, there's a fire over there somewhere. Hopefully, it's not on the course. I'll take a picture and zoom in with my phone so you can see it better. But I lost it. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so, uh, lost my phone. Um, then there was a lady who I've been hiking with on and off uh, pretty much the whole race. She had a pacer with her and when I went with them, her pacer said, oh, you know what, go ahead, start going back the, or the right way and I'll go back up and look for your phone. Oh, I just felt bad. It was so kind of her to offer and I just felt selfish for letting her because I didn't want to impact someone else's race. I still feel bad about that. Luckily, I was working in town last week when I came in early, so I got my work laptop and my work phone at the next aid station. So I should be able to both ping the phone and download whatever I need onto my work phone and use that for the time being. Hopefully someone finds my other phone. I feel bad because I don't know Jeremy's phone number and he's probably watching the, <laughs> the spot tracker wondering why I'm going backwards. Oh man, but I'm back on the correct path again. That's okay. We're we'll have to compartmentalize that, chalk it up as a sunk cost, and then just keep moving forward. You can't dwell on it. Just gonna get back to the game plan. Nice steady walking pace, and we'll be back down in uh, Jerome in not too long. Oh man, that's some good news. I got double good news. First, that smoke over there is a controlled burn. So that's good to know. And then secondly, I just passed up two guys who I saw when I was running backwards on the course and I'd asked them if they had seen a phone. They asked, hey, did you find your phone? I said, no, not yet. There's a guy, Nathan, who found it. Pretty sure, because he passed us up and asked if we lost the phone. Right after, I realized I lost the phone. I was running back on the course, really with my eyes glued to the ground. I wasn't really paying attention. And I took a slight wrong turn. So I was off the course for maybe like three minutes, five minutes tops. And in that period of time, Nathan must have gone past me. Oh, that's a relief. What are we doing here? It's just a comedy of errors. But what else would you expect, right? What are you doing running? What are you doing running? This thing, huh? You think it's going on. <laughs> Were you following the tracker? Yeah. Okay. What the hell are you doing? 
I, I really want to know what you think, where, where your head went. He's going back, he's going forth. What the hell is happening here? <laughs> he's running down hills. I, oh, it's like you lost your damn mind. I would like to know what is going on here. What? It's on airplane, right? It's not going to so I tried that. Oh, okay, okay. So I'm thinking, all right, well, I've well, got my, what I've about, got my backpack. What, what, I've, about, what I've, about this right I've here? I've got my backpack. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So how did you find out? Coming through Clarkburg. Nice town. It's the most, uh, some of the most support we've had. Not a lot of people out, but every person who was out was cheering me on. It was awesome. Just uh, looking at a lot of desert in front of me. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I can do that straight through. That's about a 25 mile haul. Yeah. So, it's so damn hot here. I'm wondering if maybe you want to try and get to Deer Pass or maybe the next one. Can we do it? Nope. I'll do it. See you in 13 miles. All right, sounds good. See you, man. Thanks. Just left Cottonwood Aid Station, which I think was mile 34. Uh, on my way to Deer Pass. <clears throat> Wanted to push to Sedona, but it's like 27 miles from here, and uh, I'm already pretty tired, so uh, I don't think I'd be able to make it there without sleeping. Uh, still felt pretty good, so decided to push on from Cottonwood and I'll hop in the back of the van and take a nap at Deer Pass once I get there. And it'll actually be night when I'm sleeping too, which would be cool. One to two hours seems like it does the trick to at least kick me out of the fog and get me up and running for a while. Maybe we'll do like an hour and a half. See how I feel. A little bit at a time. Adding up though, We're over halfway. Felt good back at Cottonwood, just a little tired, so I figured I'd push through to Deer Pass. It seems like that timing worked, but I'm getting really tired right now. I'm stumbling a little bit, and I want to be able to crawl in the back of the van and just fall asleep right away, which I think is going to happen. <laughs> Almost the deer pass. It's one o'clock on Thursday morning. Just left Deer Pass aid station, which I think was mile 147. 
so we are keeping up with our 50 miles a day pace uh, oh it's chilly this morning I start I try to start off a little cool if I can that way I don't get too hot and sweat and lose too much water and also gives me a reason to pick up the pace and warm myself up oh, so what is this day four or almost end of day three, because I guess we started at 5 a.m., right? It's definitely not getting any easier to get out of the car, that's for sure. Oh, but I'm almost there. Just gotta hold out a little bit longer. Just ride it out. Just gotta stick with it. Next stop is Sedona. Well, rolling into the aid station in Sedona. Try to stay ahead of the sleep schedule again. Getting pretty drowsy. Um, it's a quarter after five in the morning. So the stretch from Deer Park or Deer Pass to here was pretty much all in the dark and windy and cold. Couldn't really see anything. There's no moon either. I'll have to talk to Jeremy. And See how much time I have before cutoffs, what we can afford to drop here. Whew, yeah, it's a challenge. At this point, my legs feel good. It's just the uh, cumulative fatigue with loss of sleep. Every time I roll into an aid station, past two aid stations, I just feel like I'm so drowsy. Like I'm just ready to lay down and pass out. Just a little bit at a time though. I just left the Sedona aid station. Uh, Jeremy took great care of me there. I definitely needed to sleep. Uh, I got an hour in there while I was doing that. He got my bag ready. So was, he was waiting outside for me as soon as I was ready to go. He got loaded up and out the door. <laughs> definitely needed it though. Um, on the sidewalk, coming up to the aid station earlier this morning, I felt myself literally fall asleep while I was standing up and I felt my center of gravity tip backwards for just a second. Like, yeah, I can't risk that on uneven terrain and rocks, so you gotta shut it down for a little bit. A little bit at a time, man. Just micromanaging each aid station, but we'll get there. Oh, yeah. Living that day four lifestyle. Ooh. <laughs> so tired. up right now if I didn't got them soaked. Oh man, that hill was particularly unpleasant. Oh. <coughs> Glad that's over. How's it going? It's not bad, just feeling like Hard to no busters here. Talk to you soon. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Just a short walk. 
I'm on the road in between Schnebley Hill and Munns Park, I think. Uh, should be, I think it's around 12, like 11 and change miles. <clears throat> but it's all along this service road, so it should be pretty mellow. Which is a nice change of pace and the sun's moving so it's not directly overhead anymore. So we're actually getting some shadows. Oh, when I was heading up to Schnebley, I came in there feeling not great because of all the sun, it was directly overhead and there was no shade and I felt wiped when I got there. But this feels a lot better. So yeah, we're gonna go to Munns Park. I think I'm gonna sleep there maybe an hour or two and then move on to the next aid station tonight. I still wanna to try to get 50 miles a day. Make sure I stay on, on target. Hey, hey. I'll need a <laughs> you take stairs if you want that way or right down through here, either one is fine. <laughs> probably three quarters of a mile away from where I started this morning and I'm just now realizing what's going on when Jeremy was getting me all geared up and we were getting our nutrition dialed in and talking about where I'm going like I thought this was some sort of like political thing like Russians were involved and it wasn't even so much about convincing Russia that we were their allies it was like convincing him there was a third party enemy that we needed each other to be victorious <laughs> oh man oh sleep deprivation is a thing hey oh what is going on so as it really turns out I'm in a race 250 mile race called the Coconut 250 and uh, I'm following orange flags through the woods <laughs> oh boy Oh, boy. Okay. Uh, but Alex knows where he is now. And that he's not some sort of agent for political change and espionage. <laughs> oh, good gravy. Hey. Oh, I was already here. Oh. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's nice to feel one of them. Welcome back. I just left Kelly Canyon, heading towards Fort Tuthill. Um, it's late, what time is it? 2.30 in the morning. I think this is a seven or eight mile section coming up. It's another relatively easy stretch. It's on Forest Service Road. So it's gonna move pretty quick. Kelly Canyon aid station had some clutch food, they had coffee, and they had chicken tacos that were really tasty. And we technically started 5 a.m. On, on Monday. So here we're getting into day five. And uh, we're almost there. So just gotta keep grinding and pushing forward. I'm gonna be taking a two hour nap at the next aid station at Fort Tuthill. And uh, that might carry me through the end of the race. I'm not sure. Probably not. I'll probably have to stop and nap again. But uh, we're getting close. Getting real close. It's a really cool location. Oh yeah, this whole this complex yeah. is pretty awesome. Yeah. They uh, this was an Air Force base or a National Guard base that they closed back in like 1948. But, okay. How much water you got in the water? Is that full? I put three. I put two in there. Okay. That's good. And, and then you've got your additional two in your flasks. 
brother. I will see you in 17 miles. Thanks, Good man. Good job. All right, last day, day five. Um, <clears throat> just left Port Tuthill. Uh, I stopped there after a pretty long night last night. Um, slept for three hours. Popped up pretty good, feel, feel refreshed after that. Uh, the legs still feel strong. The only thing that makes me a little nervous right now is uh, sleep. It seems like uh, the sleep that I'm getting is providing diminishing benefit as my deficit of total sleep grows over the week, which has resulted a few times in me basically falling asleep while I'm walking or having to fight off sleep while I'm walking, uh, which is not ideal and makes me go very slow. So uh, hopefully that doesn't happen. Um, if that doesn't happen, I think I've got this in the bag. Just gotta stay focused and do what I'm doing. I basically need to cover 40 miles in 25 hours. And I've done over 50 miles every day so far this week, so that's very doable. Especially the terrain here is pretty good for the most part today. So I should be able to crank out some miles. Nervous but optimistic. I think that's uh, how I feel right now. All right, let's bang this out. Flagstaff, like way off on the way off in the distance from Lane Mountain on the first day, and thinking that's impossibly far. So being right at the base of them now is pretty surreal. But you know what? I'm ready for a shower. <laughs> I'm ready for a real bed. I'm ready for some good food. Oh man, this has been an experience. But uh, I'm ready for some. Uh, some recovery. What a crazy experience. All right, so Alex wakes up at, what was that aid station? It was the one before Tut Hill. Oh. Munns Park. Wakes up from Munns Park and is upset that his backpack is unpacked asks what are we doing here and i'm like you to uh <laughs> help me understand the assignment i remember saying that <laughs> and i was like dude it's gonna get cold we gotta pack these warm clothes in there and then you simply went into it and started doing your thing packing it up and you started to seem okay from that point yeah i was not okay so <laughs> I got the impression that like Jeremy knew that something was up, so I started trying to hide it from him. <laughs> so, so I walk, I walk out of the aid station, and like I'm convinced that there's some like government level like espionage going on. Like the Russians were involved. We were trying to get them to be our allies, but we couldn't. That wasn't gonna work. So we had to convince them that we had a we had a common enemy to get them on our side. And like this was going through my head the whole time. We were going through the residential neighborhood outside of Munns until we got into the woods. And I, I remembered that I was actually in Cocodona. Like until that point, like there was like three quarters of a mile where I didn't realize why I was following these flags. Like I had no idea what was going on on some different planet. Oh, uh, why were the Russians involved? I don't know. I have no idea. I must have been like having a weird dream and you 
you woke me up and I was just like, I didn't actually wake up. Like my brain was still in like a dream state or something. But I was convinced. I had no idea. So the next time I see him is this morning at Fort Tuthill. And he tells me this story and I said, oh, I thought you were doing better. You were doing okay. And uh, he said he was definitely not doing okay. And that I should not have let him let leave. So I was like, hey man, instead of doing two hours of sleep here, why don't we do three? <laughs> I didn't hang one on there. Go watch out for that. from Gibsonia, Pennsylvania.
fight I will keep on fighting on until 